remainder of the night's racing action. 30 laps to go to complete the night's racing from the Bullring. These midgets were fun earlier on, so we're going to enjoy this one. A final one for Friday night. Green flag in the air. We get off and go and race lead. Not necessarily up for grabs at the moment. Everybody trying to get some sort of real estate in a turn number two battles on there right there for P4 and 5. The speed out of these cars is, uh, is fun to watch because they carry the speed through the corners, and that's where things can get dicey. Well, and they've got the speed that the bigger cars do, and they don't have the size, which uh, it has to be chaotic behind yeah, oh yeah. the wheel. You don't have much uh, sheet metal to your left and to your right, if any. And the battle here, the 17. And I believe that's 38 of Jesse Love. Battling into turn number one. That's actually a battle for fifth. Love will take it. And I'm seeing the top four, maybe even the top six, all right together. As they're trying to figure out how this one's going to play out. And that was tight for a second right there, so swap out for that position. Looks like it's uh, Jessup who's going to be going the wrong way and forcing his way back in line. It's one way to make sure that nobody gets in front of him. You cut down in front of them, and 75 and 80 now are on a 1 2 again. They are nose to tail in this midget feature here Friday night. They'll be back here tomorrow night as well, live on lowbudget.tv. We invite you. Uh, that are watching now. If you haven't gotten the two-day pass, go ahead and get it before the racing is over. Save some cash on tomorrow night's racing action from your couch. Levin Key in the bright orange machine picking up a spot to fight for second, and somebody is slow in turn number two. That is the number 26, it looks like. Tyler Slay. Tyler stalled in turn number two now. Below the line, but we're going to go yellow. Yeah, lights are on. Caution flying is going to come out. Puts so, on pause. All the excitement inside of the top five. Tough break for Slay, though. Wasn't really wondering all the way at the back. Was about sixth or seventh position. And that car dropped down out of the groove. It's interesting. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. It looks like he just went into the corner, and the rear end did not want to stick. So maybe too much brake, too much rear brake going on there. Who knows? So again, we want to thank you for tuning in with us live here tonight. Come back tomorrow night. We're going to do it all again. The B mains are probably, I've got two favorite races. If I'm, if, if you want me to be completely honest, Evan, my two favorite races of the weekend, the entire weekend. And this is going to say, because I've not seen them yet, but going into the weekend in general, two favorites are the B-Main for the Super Late Models, where it's all on the line for who's getting in and out of that show, and, of course, the Bombers, because they're just damn exciting. I will agree 100%. You are not going to find an objection for me on those, and those tomorrow <laughs> are, are going to be ones to watch. Bomber breakout, that's a unique thing where they race against the clock and each other. We go back to green. 22 laps to go as we get... This one back underway, and it looks like Lemke going to make a play for the race lead. Was cleared for maybe a split second. Three wide for the race lead now. Duking it out, your top four. Running a pace lap at full speed right now. Bradinger in the number 80 machine. She's taking a look at third. There's Love making a pass on the outside through the middle almost. Almost looked like he was trying to split the gap, go top the bottom, and it just didn't work out. He is going to be able to get P2, though. So Brenninger falls back, stays maintains that third, if you will. Tony Brenninger as well, just behind in fourth. But Love's been doing a good job, working his way to the front of the field. One spot away from Lemke, who just put down the fastest lap of the race with a 15-3 last time by. Good stuff. I mean, they're single file, but they look like they're playing a chess match right now. Trying to size each other up and make a move. 
when it needs to be. And the fact that there is no separation means that it's still very well a battle that continues to rage on as they come across the start finish line. Lemke, Love, Brenninger, one, two. In fact, Danny and Tony fight back and forth right now for third and fourth position. Funny how the ladies duke it out. And there's Annie going. To, is that Annie in the number 80? Yep, got it. Up the P3 drops. Uh, Tony in the 80, rather. Jumps up to third 80, now falls That's back right. P4. Okay. I thought I said it incorrectly, and uh, thanks for pointing it out, because those names are going to be very familiar come tomorrow night as well. They're going to be battling up front as well. All we can lock. Back up to your lead battle. We're watching Jesse Love, who unfortunately did not finish tonight's junior late model race. He ended it over in turn number three with some weird mechanical issue. It was a great night for him up until that point. Yeah. And within eight laps of the end of it, just fell apart. But he tr is trying to reel in the k n sponsor number 80 machine. Or 60 or 90? 98. 98. Well, it's way off. Doesn't help that the rear bumper bar, the Nerf bar. Right is, where the number is. Yeah. And it's no longer just a two-car battle because I think you could toss Tony Brenninger into this with that 80 machine. All of a sudden, just came flying up on these guys and makes it a three-way duel. And here she comes. Well, the way Love got through the field would have expected that he would have been the one making moves on Lemke, but it's going to have to be a defensive couple of corners if he wants to maintain P2 because she's right there in third. And again, not fighting for P2 whilst also losing the battle for the race lead. They're keeping right with Lemke as well. Three cars under the wind down the front straightaway. If Love was saving anything, he's going to have to go because he can feel that pressure from behind. Yellow. Caution flag is out. Turn four. Second time around for the 26. Slay's issues first time. We're in turn number two. and This time in turn four. Well, nine lap shootout. I feel like the cautions have been kind of coming out with nine laps to go. Right at nine, eight to go, we've had at least three now. Yeah, uh-huh. And obviously the race leader is not a fan of that trend. I'm sure the folks here <laughs> in the grandstands and tuning in aren't going to complain that they get a couple of okay. late race restarts in these things. These things are fun on the restart. They're badass to try to get uh, up to speed and also battling. And uh, you know what? I don't think the race is over yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they're three wide in turn three yes. because Lemke... Obviously, going to restart this race up front, but I think Love was showing the speed there enough that he could challenge for the race lead. And we've seen three wide before. These cars a little less take up a little bit of less real estate than some of the super lates we've seen, and yes. they were going three wide. So uh -huh. if Tony Brenninger really wants to, could see some three wide. Looks like we're going to get the one to go from the flag stand this time by. Nine laps to go for the remainder of Friday night, night number one of the Senators' Cup Fall Classic. See the lights out from the pace car. As it crossed the line there. I don't really know what my strategy was for uh, setting up that camera right where it is. I figured if there is a photo finish, we should have two angles Right on, on top of it. Yeah, so that's the method to my madness. We might see that happen right now. Nine laps to go to I settle it out. don't have a clue what's going on up front. That uh, green flag's in the air, but it was not pretty. And off and away and in control of this thing all of a sudden. Lemke comfortably out in front. Held way back and then got going. Well, there's your three wide, but the and caution there's the will yellow. Fly. Yeah. I had a feeling that that was coming out. I don't know if it was Lemke hanging back a little bit. I don't know if Love was trying to guesstimate, if you will, on when. That number 98 was going to get going, but it was not picture perfect. Well, we're going to try it again. I think in this class, consistently, I think the 
pace car is the one that's in the way more than anything else. Because these drivers want to just pass it on the back straightaway. So we'll try it again. Nine laps left to go. Green flag racing. Oh, and there he goes around, spinning the 98 machine. We're going to see another yellow, yes. Yep, stopped at the racetrack. And after having, regardless of what went down on that last one, such a fantastic restart. Kind of wondering if you see what I see. Do you see yep. some fluid there? Right where that car came to a stop. Let's see if we've got a trail here. And it looks to me like there might be a trail. Jesse Love going over to the official. Let's see if I can dial up a replay as the safety vehicle is now going to. And Love is on the front row with Lemke. And Lemke turned around in this one, and Love is having a chat with the officials. But I think there may be some method to your logic because. Safety vehicles have headed over to that spot and turns one and two, and will attend to the situation. So let me pull up this replay here. Let's see if we can better look at this thing all by himself. And you do see something. Take a look, Evan, at the right rear in between the car chassis and the wheel. Unless I'm seeing something, kind of looks like there's something pouring out. Could be wrong. The dark that, spot there. Then that car gets all sorts of crossed up against smoke coming right from that spot. Like, I have no idea what could be smoking back there. But you'll notice that spot's not there before the car's there. So there's definitely something coming out of it. And when it rolls, yeah, you see, it's pretty it obvious sprays. to see it. Yeah. As it kind of slid to a stop, whatever was shooting out was shooting. That's interesting. And now there's a ton of speedy dry in that spot. But. We're going to actually fix the problem right now on Low Budget TV. Yeah. Like you said, there's no dark spot until the 98 shows up of Lemke. And that could have been big because that car went around from the front row, yes, but of course in the middle of the racetrack. Cars on the inside, cars on the outside. Talk about threading the needle for and that one not being a big pileup. You were busy at school, but during practice when I was setting up, we had a three-car wreck due to oil down. And the Super Late models that took out some heavy hitters. So that speedy drive is going all the way. You can see it. Uh huh. For the entry of one to set up a turn two where that car came to a stop, and then some because as the car drove away, you can see the the trail follow down the back straightaway. So it, it might be a little bit as they clean this one up. Yes, this track did a fantastic job of cleaning up spills. All right, lights out. Here comes the pace car. We're back to green this time by nine to go. So far, so good. Everybody's able to squeeze in Did that area down in one and two. And no issues. Nobody spun it out or anything. A lot more real estate, I think, to work with in three and four. Not where the majority of the mess is, but right here you can see everybody trying to do their best to squeeze in there. The car back end gets really sideways if you're up in the thick stuff. Well, Bradinger making it happen right now in the lead. Jesse Love in the second spot. Going up the track. Oh, it's spinning again. Well, do you think there could be some oil that they're hitting? Still waiting, and now the caution flying is going to come out. And you can see two cars got sideways there at the same time, back to back in the that's, middle of the pack. So yep. That's kind of what I'm thinking is. I don't know if they found something or if... Just drove it in a little bit too hard, following the guy in front of you. You get up into the, the dirty stuff. Well, the 40 gets like, fired back up, and we're going to get the one to go this time by. So we are not waiting around. I think everybody wants to get out of this wind. So you heard race control. That's Tim Richter. Well, that's not Tim Richter. We're back to racing here, this time by, well, 
Maybe. Race control not happy where that 38 is, so we'll see if uh, see if this one goes. He's trying to keep a nose to the outside, and now he'll go down to the inside. So green flag in the air, single file. Maybe for that number three spot, 44 machine, trying to find something. But again, I don't see anybody making a move down in one and two on a racetrack, so it's this end. And if you're going to have a run, you want to try to coordinate that with. Good battle here. Is there nose to tail. No contact, though. It's only a matter of time, it seems. And you have to wonder if you're tech that tightly up against the car behind you, how well can you see that line that yeah. you can run down in one and two? You see they're starting to get those right side tires a little bit higher than I'm sure they would like. That all comes with the mutual amount of pressure that's being put on each other. The laps are ticking away. I see the interview announcer heading downstairs, so that means we have three laps to go. With HPD midgets here. Right. That top, fight for third. Yep, top three. Uh, uh, or at least top two single files spread out, but this battle for third, Evan, like you were saying. Push it on each other in turn two there. Goes back to what we talked about earlier. Using the bumper's a lot easier oh. when you have a bumper and <laughs> you can see yeah. the effects of that push in turn four. White flag in the air. It's gonna go all the way down to the end of that fight. And checkered flag for Tony Bradinger. We'll come to the line. Battle for third, stay the same. Jesse Love finishing second. And that will wrap up tonight's bullring action. Night number one of the Senators Cup Fall Classic. Confirms our suspicions that it was allowed. I think so. Once once race control announces it, pretty certain. Well, here comes Miss Bradinger out of her number eighty winning machine, and we'll send it downstairs for the interview. Hardware here for you. <laughs> Nice job. Well, you're uh, no stranger to the, the winter circle here at the Bull Ring. Uh, after the restarts and everything, uh, how was the track and uh, what did it take to get back here to the winter circle? Um, the track was definitely slick during this last restart. Um, it really felt like I was almost on a dirt track. My car was sliding everywhere, it felt like. Um, so I really just had to make sure this time I was like a lot more patient and really, really smooth to not overdrive the turns. And yeah, I mean, just consistency and I had overall speed. Um, so far this weekend, so that just helped me get to the winter circle. You and your sister always perform well here. What do you like about the bull ring so much? Um, this is honestly just such a fun track. It's the biggest track that this series races on, so it's a lot of fun and it's really fast, and I just really love this track. Who do you want to thank? I definitely want to thank my dad and Chris Lay. They've worked so hard all weekend to set up my car perfectly. I also want to thank Royal Purple and OMP Racing. What are you going to use from tonight that uh, will help you tomorrow night, you think? Um, I honestly don't think we're going to change too much to the car. Uh, it feels pretty solid right now. If anything, just kind of fix little things driver-wise, but I think we'll kind of keep the car the same. All right. Good deal. Congrats, everybody. Tony Bredinger. All right, so the HPD Midgets will be coming up next here on Low Budget TV. Have okay, fight. folks, this is how our USAC HPD Midgets are going to line up. The number 75 of Annie Bredinger is on the pole. 44 of Cody Jessup on the outside pole. Followed by the 17 of Joey Iced. 38, Jesse Love. The 80 car of Tony Bredinger. 
the 17 car of Chaz Grote, the 14 car of Johnny Nichols, the 40 car of Blake Brannon, the 21 car of Adam Lemke, and the 26B of Tyler Slay. I always love it when the PA announcer can fill in for us, huh, Evan? Don't work harder, work smarter. It's exactly. Well, there is your starting lineup as we get ready for our final HPD Midget main event of the weekend. And for those of you watching here live on lowbudget.tv, we appreciate you for being with us all weekend. Or for those of you that picked up the one-day single pass, thank you for being with us tonight. Either way, we thank you. David and I are having a fun time here at the Boring and happy to have you tuning in with us. We get ready for our HPD Midget Main Event. It'll be a 30 lapper. Field at the ready, bringing it to the che or the green flag. That checkered flag will come later. Looking for the checker. The 75 of Rodiger leads down to turns one and two. Challenge is going to be for P2, and they're physical about it. Not a lot of manners on the opening lap. No. And funny enough, from the cars that you do not want to be mean with either. Love on the the windshield, if you will. At least, uh, Jessup. That's Jessup. Driving Love's car. One of them. Or Jessup loves Love and loves to have him on his lovely race car. coming at you. It's a fast speed out of these cars. HPD Midgets. Somewhat of a spec class out here on the West Coast. You can see them race on asphalt here at the Boring and other tracks, as well as the dirt tracks. You slap on the dirt tires and suspension, raise them up a little bit, and a hammer down on the cushion. And watch Brodiger there in second, because that's the fastest car on track. 15-4 last time by so the 80 machine feeling sporty and wants to challenge any broad injured P2 but Tony P2 top three on the screen top three under a blanket and with that Jessup is starting to slowly reel in third place making it a four car battle Bradinger in the second spot. Here at the board. Oh, some bumper tag. Jesse Love, no stranger to using that front. I think he uses the bumper more in the midget than he does any of the in stock In the car cars. that doesn't have the bumper. Yeah. He prefers the bumper. He's an outlaw, man. Well, and that constant kind of nagging, I'd almost call it, from third and second is allowed any I any brought in up front to pull away a little bit because Tony was all over that car up front and now all of a sudden that focus kind of has to get turned to the car behind you who keeps hitting you three four times a lap the second spot battle is the one to watch right now love now looking to the outside Go where Tony is not. Third of the way home, last time by. 10 down, 20 to go. And everybody up front keeping each other honest. This thing's quick away at the lap. It's quick, too. Especially for the Folks up front, 15 second lap time, some of the fastest stuff we've been seeing. And now second and third, while they have not stopped fighting with one another, a bowl's closed in. On a 75 up front, battled for the race lead, back at it. 
Don't expect them to play nice. No, not at all. Especially when we got sisters duking it out for the win. Battle for the second spot, though. It's almost counterintuitive. You would, I guess, expect maybe for them to take it a little bit easier on each other, but I think they use that as a little bit more motivation without wrecking each other. <laughs> But, but you don't want to you know, be the one at the dinner table who doesn't have the trophy sitting next to you. Uh, very true. Very true. And that's where love can come in and play spoiler. If they get too focused on one another, he's sitting right there in third. And I mean right there in third. You're top three, you can throw a blanket over him. You know what they say at Thanksgiving, the first one to the pay window is the first one to grab the biscuit. I don't know who said that, but I just did. Traffic is going to be in front of your leaders. Jesse Love was going to look for a way to the outside. That had to come to a halt. If you get lucky, the person in front of you can catch that lap traffic in a tough spot inside of the corner, going out of the corner, and it might be able to almost use that to your advantage, but of course the primary objective is you yourself has to get through cleanly, and everybody that time successfully around the second bit of lap traffic. Clean racetrack for a little bit. Let these top three go at it past halfway, closing it next time by on 10 laps to go. Well, and we got a three-car battle for the lead now. Love wants that outside lane. He's been trying to get up there for some time, and now side by side with Tony. Trying to keep that 80 machine down. Love had it at the strike. Nine laps to go. This race flying by. And it helps with this battle up front, keeping us entertained. And this is great news for Andy Prodiger up front because every time they start to dance for second and third, again, she's not getting way out in front, but I'll take three, four car lengths over no car lengths. Oh, yeah. So if they're fighting each other, in theory, they can't be fighting you. And still side by side, so tight in the corner though. And Love thought that time might have finally gotten clear, but. Tony's keeping him on us, just barely getting a nose in there every single time as to not let him get cleared. That is tight. These two are racing it tight. Finally. Oh, love will chop down in front of Tony. She'll have to hit the brakes, and you saw the smoke coming out of the left front. And he's got to go now. Love up the P2. Five laps to go. You can see sparks coming out in turn two. Start finish line, top three it's still on the screen like they have been most of this race. And now Love, trying to close in on Annie Bradinger. We got a Bradinger sandwich with Love in the middle. And here he comes, right on the back bumper of Annie, peeking a peek to the outside. Two to go. And if they get physical up front again, Car sitting right there in third. Tony Brodinger in a pretty good spot. Doesn't want to win around though. Trying to get to the inside in three. Can't happen. Side by side for the lead. White flag. All right, it's go time. Drag race down the back straight. Love will take the spot out of two. And he looking for the crossover. Not going to give up and right back to the inside. Trying to hold it over. Cooked it too much. And he will lead two laps. And one of them is the checkers. How about that one for Jesse Love to steal it? Over Randy Brodiger, who ends up second. Tony coming home in third. That was a finale right there. And I thought that crossover was going to do it. Turn yeah. three had the position. If you overcook it, the car on your right side typically acts as a brake, but <laughs> uh, ended up behind him. And uh, A well-timed one. Love really struggled uh, to get around Tony in the battle for a second. Once he did, that was able to close up on the 75 in the battle for the race lead. And, Makes the most of it, didn't waste the opportunity. And I feel like Love finally gets a little bit of a break over the it weekend. It has been a rough go. Yeah. We've been saying his name a lot in a lot of races, but not always for the best of reasons on how things have been going for them. So. Well, he'll get a trophy here tonight. That'll erase a lot of the bad memories of the weekend. As he'll come to victory lane. 
for his trophy and his interview. Congratulations, Jesse Love. In the number 38, who I think has the most laps this weekend of any driver in the pits. the car and celebrating Jesse we got a tro trophy here for you and get all his gear off and heck of a pass there at the end what did you guys think about that pass Congrats! Uh, tell, tell us all about that pass. What were you thinking? Were you, you know, set enough for the, the few laps before? Yeah, well, really, just uh, try not to uh, hit the wall there a couple of times. Towards around lap 10, we just started working on the high side. Uh, in the beginning, it wasn't very effective, and then just started how to cook it in a little bit more. And I remember in the beginning of this weekend, I told Tony Caputo, I was like, "There's no high side here. It's just a one group track." Well, so I guess I was wrong. But I mean, really, it was just an amazing weekend for last night. Uh, we were leading until about, about, about lap 25, and uh, I fell asleep on the start. That was my bad. And uh, so it feels great to be back here in Victory Lane. I won this race last year, and uh, but this year, uh, this race is, is uh, dedicated to Dustin Edge. He's not going to be here for the next six months. He's getting deployed. He's in the Air Force, so uh, this wins for him. Good deal. Who, who else do you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Fleece Insurance, 5150, Gunnarsson Direct, and uh, you know all the guys that help us out, Home Smiles, and. Dustin, Trace, Nick, Cody, and um, just everybody who helps us out. All right, congratulations. Everybody give it up for Jesse Love.